Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video guys. In this video, we're going to go over a full card breakdown for UFC 304. Uh, we finally got a legit card coming up. I mean, we've been struggling with these Apex cards, these Fight Night cards with Women's MMA main events. So we've been having a tough time. I mean, this, these times have been rough. And uh, I'll be honest, I mean, this main event feels a lot better after like uh, having to watch uh, Women's MMA main event this week, a low level Women's MMA main event. Uh, gender versus Lemos. Last week we had uh, Rose and Amajunas taking on. Uh, it was Tracy Cortez, and uh, I'll be honest, I'm really looking forward to this main event, man. And we also got Tom Aspinall taking on uh, Razor Curtis Blades. Uh, Aspinall, uh, obviously, that this is a rematch for these two between these two guys. I mean, the first fight ended up in a freak injury. Aspinall's uh, knee gave out, so he's going to he's trying to get this one back. I mean, in his uh, in his hometown. And let's do a breakdown, guys. We also got some other good fights in this card. We got the undefeated uh, flyweight prospect here. Um, uh, Muhammad Makayev taking a Manol Cap. Um, so this, this should be a fun fight. Hopefully Manol Cap makes weight. I mean, he missed weight by like a couple of pounds. Uh, he was supposed to fight Nikolaou a couple of months ago. Hopefully he doesn't miss weight. I mean, I want to see this fight on this card so bad. I think this is a good good flyweight matchup here. Also, we got two strikers, uh, Arnold Owl and Tegan Giga Chikadze. I mean, that's to be a good striking matchup there. I think all these fights on the main card are like striking matchups. I mean, I don't really see a lot of these guys shooting takedowns out there other than maybe Mikhaev. So, uh, it should be, there should be some good, good fights in this card. I mean, even the prelims look pretty good. I mean, Bobby Green taking Patty Pimblay, a legit step up in competition for Patty Pimblay. That should be a good matchup also. We got Mal Meatball, Molly McCann taking on uh, Bruno Brazil, the McCann Crusher, uh, Molly McCann. Um, they're giving her a pretty good matchup here. I mean, like, Bruno Brazil doesn't shoot takedowns, so hopefully she's probably going to go out and just stand and bang, right, like, with Bruno Brazil. And that's a good matchup for, uh, I'll be honest, there. Also, we got Oban Elliott taking Preston Parsons. Obi and Elliott's fights are always entertaining, and so is Preston Parsons. I mean, these guys are fun fighters to watch. We also got Colin Loffer and Tina Ramon Torres. Uh, Ramon Torres coming off that uh, really entertaining fight with Serhi Saidi in his rematch. And that was probably the best fight on the UFC 297 card. And that was a that was the Canadian card. It was pretty bad. I mean, the Canadian card was pretty bad. So that was probably, I'm happy for, uh, I'm happy to see Tim Ron Torres back. I mean, he's always, he's, his fighting style is really entertaining. He's a good striker, good boxer. The prelims, I mean, like Mick Parkins taking Lucas Brzezerski. Mick Parkins trains with uh, Tom Aspinall. I think he's his main training, sp uh, training partner. I mean, so, um. Sparring partner, I mean that should be a good matchup there. I mean they're both fighting on the same card. Obviously, I mean he's from he's out of England, so there's no shock there. Um, also we got Prakner taking Bakas, because I mean who cares about this fight anyways? I mean this is a good matchup. I mean Gre Robocop taking on uh, Christian Leroy Duncan. That's a good matchup right there. That's gonna be a banger. I mean R Robocop is always in fun fights. Let's start with the early PLM guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Um, I do research early, like I, I try to get these videos out early for pay-per-view cards. If you guys enjoy the breakdowns early, make sure you guys smash the like button. Also leave a comment down below with your most confident parlays, with your more, most confident uh, picks on the card. I would love to see where you guys are, uh, what you guys are think thinking for this card. Let's talk about this first fight, guys. This is a short notice fight for Alice uh, Ad Adeline. Um, so Sh uh, Shauna Bannon was supposed to fight uh, Ermin. I think she's supposed to fight Oliveira, right? Irene Oliveira. And uh, Oliveira withdrew for some reason. I don't know what the reason was. Um, but I know that now they got out uh, this girl's taking this fight on short notice. Alice, I mean, she's, she's not a bad fighter. Alice is actually a good fighter. She just hasn't been fighting the best level of competition out there. I mean, her. I, I went back and I was watching some tape on her. And she's obviously looking really good out there. But all these girls don't have a single win. They're like 0-5. I mean, this girl's like 0-5. Pretty bad. I mean, she's not fighting the best level of competition out there. This girl's like 0 and 2 and 1. I mean, probably the best girl who's fought recently. This girl's like 0 and 4. I mean, so like all these girls who's fighting, I mean, I guess she's just trying to build that record and get an opportunity to the UFC. Now, now she got a call to the UFC. So this is her opportunity to see to for uh, to make uh, all of us realize that she's legit. She's got some decent striking. I mean, I was watching the VLE, Jang VLE fight back. That was like back in like 2016 though. Like Jang VLE probably like, like two real bad things to her in the, probably the first minute of the fight. And if they ran that one back, obviously she, she had some success in this fight. I mean, her striking was, she's really aggressive on the feet. She throws like crazy bounds on the feet. 
she's willing to take chances, willing to just exchange um, in the pocket without any striking defense. Her takedown defense is really bad, though. Like, that's, like, I don't think her takedown defense really improved. No one's really trying to take her down recently. Like, all these girls are pretty low level, so... I think Shauna Bannon, I'm not really that high on Shauna Bannon. I did pick Bruno Result to beat her, but this is nothing. I thought Bruno Result was going to just outstrike her technically, and she was able to do that. But it was a pretty close matchup, though. I am going to go Shauna Bannon here. Um, by this is a low confidence pick. I have been impressed with their uh, couple of her fights. I mean, um, in the amateurs, I mean, Chanel Dyers is a pretty good prospect out of PFO. Uh, she's 5 0 now, so uh, that was a pretty good back and forth fight. And she was taking on Snow Dyers. is a good kickboxer. I mean, out of Paris, France. I mean, so Dyers is a high level prospect uh, in women's MMA in PFO right now. So I know who Snow Dyers is. And that was in 2021. So that wasn't even that long ago. It was only like less than three years ago. I mean, so that wasn't that long ago. Also, she fought Dakota Deshiva, who's probably one of the best prospects in women's MMA outside the UFC right now. And she also fights in PFO. She's on a roll right now, 12 and 0. So. She went the distance in that fight, so she's pretty tough. I mean, she's pretty tough. She also dropped uh, Snow Dyers with a head kick, so she's sneaky on the feet. I'm going to go Sean and Bannon here by the season. I don't think we have lines out for this fight. I haven't seen any betting lines out there uh, for this fight, so I'm, I'm, I'm expecting Sean and Bannon to be at least like minus 180, minus 150, or like 2-1, to one, like close to 2-1. to one. Um, I think she gets this one done by... Um, I'll I'll go by like I don't know. Does he get the submission? I mean, I could see her. I could I could see her locking in a submission maybe, but um, I mean, she. I'll go by decision. I mean, she's, she's, uh, Alice is pretty tough and durable. I'll go uh, decision for uh, Shauna Bannon here. Next fight on the card is gonna be Christian Leroy Duncan taking on Gregory Rodriguez. This is a good matchup, man. It's actually a good matchup. So I was like watching all their fights back, and Robocop is like. This guy's a junkyard dog, man. I mean, his his fights are all like crazy every time he's out there fighting. He's getting hurt in these in these fights, taking some damage in these fights. I mean, Brad Torres fight that was probably his best performance out there recently, and his striking was looking a lot better, man. Robocop striking has looked a lot better recently. Also, he's known for his jiu-jitsu. I mean, he's a like a I think a, like a multiple time uh, jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu champion, like uh, grappling champion. Jiu-Jitsu Jiu -Jitsu champion, I mean, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion, I mean, I can't fucking say it. <laughs> but yeah, um, Robocop is like, striking has definitely been improving a lot. I mean, he's, it's, 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 he's made uh, a lot of striking improvements out there. Obviously, he got caught with Bruno Ferreira with the, with the left hook counter there. So a straight, that was a straight, like, it, was, it wasn't even like a crazy powerful shot. I mean, Bruno, Brazil hit, Bruno, Bruno not Brazil, Bruno Ferreira hits pretty hard. <laughs> And he was able to land that counter. Like, Rodriguez is kind of chinny. He's been kind of chinny, like, throughout his career. You can definitely, like, knock him out, I mean, with one punch. I mean, a lot of people have done it. Even this guy on contender series, Jordan Williams, was able to knock him out with the one punch. Also, Bruno Lopez was able to knock him out in 2014. Bruno, Bruno Lopez is not really known for his one-punch power or, like, on, a power on the feet. He's a guy that's, like, known for his grappling, mostly. Um... Like, so, I, I he's got good wins. I mean, knocking out Jin Ying Park. I mean, all class in Dusko Todorovich. That was a pretty close matchup, though. But, obviously, Robuka was landing the better shots out there. Also mixing in takedowns. So, this is going to be a good matchup, man. I could, Robocop, like, sometimes he doesn't wrestle out there. Like, sometimes he's, like, he he likes striking. I mean, I've seen interviews where he said that he he loves striking. He's, he's falling in love with the striking. And I have a feeling he's going to strike out there. He's not really going to be shooting takedowns right from the jump. And Duncan is, uh, like, even though Duncan's not really that proven yet, I mean, he's a high-level, like, kickboxer. I mean, he's really slick, and he's, he's got really good footwork out there. And um, if Robocop, like, can't just... is, I think Robocop's going to pressure him, though. I, I know for a fact that Robocop's going to pressure him, and he's going to leave some openings out there. Uh, man, is Robocop going to wrestle, though? That's the question. If he's gonna not going to wrestle, like... I gotta go with Duncan here. I think Duncan's gonna get this one done. I'm a big fan of Robocop, but I have a suspicion that Duncan's gonna be not that easy to land clean shots on for Robocop. And uh, Robocop, if he wrestles, I mean, he can win this fight if he wrestles and just uses his BGG, but he likes striking out there. So Duncan, I mean, striking, he doesn't have that one, like, he hasn't shown that one punch KO power in the UFC. This fight, it was like a ground and pound. He took down Hibero. He was outclassing Hibero on the feet in the first round, but Hibero was like nowhere near the level of Robocop. And then Dennis Tulin fight. That was, I mean, Tulin was having some good moments out there in that in that first couple of rounds. 
I think he ate a wheel kick and uh, got knocked out after Procyon. I mean, that was his debut in the UFC. No, that was his second fight in the UFC, and Procyon was just able to uh, out-technique him in, on the feet. And uh, Duncan was really playing around out there, like showboating out there. So I got to go with Duncan here. Like, uh, low confidence in Duncan. I'm not, like, crazy confident. This was a freak injury for Dusko Todorovic. We didn't really get to find out too much about Duncan's game there. But I think uh, Duncan's pretty pretty slick, man. He's got really good footwork, and he's got really nice elbows in the clinch. I think Robocop has more power. I mean, he's definitely got more power. He's also got the BGJ, the takedowns. I mean, he's got really nice takedown timing on the takedowns. But yeah, I'm going to go with Duncan here. By um, I'll go by knockout. I'll go by knockout for Duncan. Duncan is a minus... Uh, I think he's a slightly favorite, right? Minus 135. I think Duncan gets it done. Um, Robocop is really, really dangerous, though. <laughs> he's really dangerous, and he's really tough. You better shut his lights out. I mean, he's going to keep fucking chasing you around if you don't shut his lights out, like Fahir was able to do. And uh, he caught him with the perfect counter there, right in the chin, right in the button. It was it was a good night good night for Robocop there. And he took a lot of damage in that um, uh, that cheating Yukwani fight. I mean, he had a crazy cut open on his forehead. And he he was he was in for a takedown and he had a knee up the middle. So Leroy, Leroy probably can time something like that also. Give me Leroy Duncan by KO, TKO. Might go the distance though, because Robocop's pretty tough and durable though. And this is a winnable fight for Gregory Rodriguez. Like I'm not crazy confident Duncan here. Next fight on the card is gonna be um Medusa's Bacoska's taking on Martian Pracneal. I mean, these guys, honestly, like, every time these guys fight, I mean, I pretty much, like, think they're the same person. I mean, they, say, they both do the same thing. I mean, it's, like, the way they win fights, like, they're go they're both, like, decent strikers with, like, some decent cardio and some okay durability. They've both been KO'd, like, four times. I mean, it's, like, like oh, no, who knows what's going to happen in this fight. Like, just, I'm going to go with the underdog, Martian Pracneal. Like, I'm not that impressed with this guy. I would, I'll be honest. Like, he's a decent kickboxer. I mean, he was looking not that terrible in that Vitor Trino fight on the feet. And Trino had to wrestle, right? He wasn't really, like, striking wasn't really working out for him all that much. And Prakani is pretty durable, man. He's pretty durable. So, like, but Casca, I mean, he does have that win over Tyson Pedro. That's probably his best win. Um, and he also, I think he has a win over, um, um, no, that, I thought he had, a, no, that's the other, that's this guy that has a win over Ronald Ray. So, it's like, they both have wins that they shouldn't have. So, like, who knows, man? I mean, William Knight, that William Knight fight, William Knight just didn't do anything in that fight. It was just, he just, like, stood there and just oh, accepted defeat. I mean, that was a really weird fight. That was a really weird fight from William Knight there. He was okay just losing that fight. It was really weird. That was probably, I think that was one of the worst fights in UFC history. Like, we give um, Rose Namajunas, oh, that, that, like, that Carlos Barzo fight was terrible. You guys should probably go back and watch that William Knight fight. It was it was one of the worst fights I've ever seen. I'll be on like I, like I I couldn't even get myself to go back and watch that fight because I know exactly what happened. I remember that fight clear as day. I just don't feel like going back and watching that fight. It was like it's gonna be this waste of my fifteen minutes of my life watching that fight back. And on the like, I actually think he's not a bad striker. I mean, he was able to uh, round three gas out in that fight. Round three was looking really good early. Then uh, Martian Prackney was able to take over. And then Devin Clark fight. I mean, Mar Devin Clark just couldn't get takedowns in that fight. He wasn't... I don't even think he was shooting takedowns in that fight. It was really weird. And Martian Prackney, obviously, being the better technical kickboxer, was able to outstrike him. Give me Martian Prackney by the season. He's obviously 36 years old, so he's getting up there in age. And also, it doesn't have the reach of in his ear. I get it why people are picking Bikaskas. I mean, his favorite here, I think, Bikaskas is a um, minus 148 right now. Give me Pracneal, low confidence Pracneal to get it done by the season. Next fight on the card is going to be uh, Sam Patterson taking on Kiefer Crosby. I think Kiefer Crosby is an absolute fraud and he should not be fighting the UFC. Like, I'll say that right now. Sam Patterson, I mean, made his debut at 170. He looked pretty good out there. Like, he looked pretty good out there at 170. And obviously, he got knocked out at um, in his uh, debut at 155. But, you know, Asmos has got like T Rex arms. So, like, I was like, holy shit. I mean, this guy got knocked by, you know, Asmos. I mean, like, whatever his name is. Um, and who's got, like, 68 inch reach. I think he's got, like, T-Rex arms. I'm not even kidding right now. I mean, let's look at his reach. I mean, you know, Asmos. That's not, you know, Asmos. I think he's got, like, 
68 inch read, right? 60, 60, um, okay, 68 inch reach. I like, I, this, this guy's, I can't believe he was able to knock him out. I guess probably because Sam Patterson chin wasn't looking good at 155 because he is a pretty big dude. Um, and yeah, he was cutting a lot of weight to make 155 to make, uh, make that uh, 155 limit. I mean, and uh, like that fight, I mean, his debut at 170 really didn't tell us all that much. Yo Johan Linus, I mean, I was expecting Johan Linus to go out there and like strike with this guy. Like he was like not trying to strike with him. He was like just trying to wrestle him. And he got caught in that guillotine guillotine choke. And it was like really weird, man. You know, like and Johan Linus just didn't I, I thought we we're gonna see what kind of ch chin Sam Patterson has at 170. And we didn't get to find out because uh Johan Linus wanted nothing to do on the feet. He just wanted to like grapple this guy, take him down. And obviously got caught in the submission, right? That was like a pretty slick submission there by Sam Patterson. He's got a really nice back takes, man. He's got better cardio here. He's also got the better technical striking. Kiefer Crosby's got like some power on the feed. Other than that power in the first round, if he doesn't get the first round KO, he's got all, I think he's got all wins by KO in the first round. All five wins in the first round by KO. And he's been finishing every every last by first round. So like this is probably going to go under one and a half rounds. I think it is going to go under one and a half rounds. And I'm going to go with Patterson by, uh, I'll go by submission. I think he can take his back and submit him. I mean, because Kiefer Crosby, if he doesn't get the KO, he's really reckless out there. He is going to go for the KO. I mean, he was able to knock out Alex Oliver, which uh, got him that contract to the UFC, I guess. But yeah, um, even that Kevin just said fight, I think the striking looked pretty mid. Uh, Kevin just said, I think is a better striker than Sam Patterson, I'll be honest. But um, getting subbed in the first round by Kevin just said, I mean, not really the best look. I think Sam Patterson has better submissions than uh, Kevin just said. Give me Sam Patterson by first round submission. Um, I think most people are picking him by submission first round. I mean, he might get his first round TKO, grounded upon maybe finish if he gets on top. But I think he's going to go for a submission. He goes for a submission every time. Uh, Sam Patterson is a um, minus 355. Jesus. I think under one half rounds, under two and a half rounds is probably the way to go now. Then Paro Link, Sam Patterson, because we haven't really seen his chin tested at 170. He does have some solid wins outside the UFC. I mean, he has a win over um, uh, Kamal Magomedov, who's pretty legit, fights in Brave CF. And um, Kamal Magomedov is not terrible. I mean, so uh, also has a win of Felipe Silva. Like, so he's fought some decent guys. I mean, out there, like in, um, um, in Brave CF and these other promotions, AMC also. AMC is like a good, decent promotion also. Give me Sam Patterson by submission. Um, I think he gets it done by submission. All right, guys. Next fight on the card is going to be Mick Perkins taking on Lucas Berjerski. I think Mick Perkins is, is going to get this one done, man. I think he can wrestle if he needs to. Lucas Berjerski's taking defense is like like 38% or something like that. It's really, it's really horrible. Uh, let me see what his taking defense I think it's like 20, 38%. Like, I'm not even kidding right now. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, his taking defense is a... 36% taken even. That's pretty bad. I mean, he, he got taken on by Walter Walker four times, even though he won that fight. That was pretty close. He got taken on by Carl Williams eight times. I mean, Carl Williams is a decent kickboxer, so no shame getting taken on by Carl Williams, I guess. Um, He was taken doing like, so he's been taken on a lot of times, man. Eight takedowns, like, is a lot. I mean, and obviously Walter Walker took him down every time he wanted to take him down. Couldn't really, like, do anything, any damage from top position. He was able to get in full mount a couple of times. Um, and Walter Walker just wasn't really doing a whole lot of damage. I still thought Walter Walker probably should have won that fight, but he just wasn't doing that much damage, so they gave it to Brzezowski. Obviously got KO'd by Waldo, Waldo Cortez Acosta in the first round. It was a, that was a pretty crazy KO if you guys go back, watch that, go back and watch that KO. I, I honestly still think he won that fight over Martin Bede. I lost a ton of money betting on Brzezowski there. I bet him live. I honestly thought he was in full control of that fight, and they gave it to Martin Brede. For some reason, I really don't understand why they gave it to Brede there by split decision. So he probably should be like, I think he should be like at least like um, two and two in his last, uh, two and two, two and one in his last five fights. I mean, because he won that fight over Martin Brede. Like, I'm, I'm still thinking he won that fight. If you go back and watch that fight, he outstruck Martin Brede by like a lot. I mean, let's take a look how many how many times he outstruck uh, Martin Brede to 118 to 66 significant strikes i mean so like i don't know how they gave it to martin Bade. martin Bade is like the king of winning split this isn't somehow like some more like so i know people are gonna look at the record and be like oh he got beat by martin Bade. i mean which is pretty bad but he won that fight to be fair 
But I think Mark McParkins is going to be a better striker. Trains with Tom Aspinall. He's going to have the more power, I feel like, also on the feet. And I, I like his grappling also. He was taking on uh, Kaya Machado in that fight. And it was like he was all wrestling him in a couple of exchanges out there. Yeah, I like Mick Perkins. I think he gets it done uh, by... Um, can he get a finish? I mean, like, I think he goes a distance. I mean, Brzezinski is pretty tough and durable. Perkins hasn't really shown a lot of finishing buddy out there recently. Like, so... Uh, give me give me Mike Perkins by um by this season. I think he gets it done by this season here. Mike Perkins minus two eighteen. I think it's not a terrible parlor piece, I'll be honest with you guys. I think that's not a bad parlor piece um on this card. Um next fight on the card is gonna be Oban Elliott and Preston Parsons. Give me Preston Parsons here. Even though Oban Elliott's been look he's on a roll. I mean he's on a huge win streak right now. I watched every fight of his. I watched that Akai Caprito fight live um, on the Contender Series last year. And uh, he had some, like, he, this guy's tough, though. He's, he's got crazy cardio. He's tough. He can wrestle for his life. And he showed a lot of toughness in that fight. But he's been getting hurt in these fights, man. I mean, these guys, Akai Caprito is pretty big for the weight class, to be fair. Akai Caprito is, like, a like, huge, really powerful striker. And uh, he kind of gassed out in that fight. And, well, Woodburn had him, had him hurt badly. And so, like, he's, he's taken a lot of damage in this fight. He also, he has been KO'd a couple of times um, in, in uh, Cage Warriors, I think. Yeah, he's, he got knocked out by Michael Figlak and got knocked out by Madaris Felimas. But he's on a win streak right now. He's looking, he's 5-0. and So, I guess people like that, that he's 5-0. and He's looking good right now. But I think Preston Parsons is going is to give him problems out there. I like Preston Parsons. I picked him as underdog over Matthew Summersberger. And he looked better than I expected him to look, man. I mean, Samuelsberger is out there dropping everyone. He could not drop Preston Parsons out there. Preston Parsons outstruck him, took him down whenever he wanted to take him down. Like, outclassed him completely 30-27. It was all three judges scored that fight 30-27 because it was a complete out, uh, outclassing. And um, Preston Parsons looked the best he's ever looked out there, man. He should have won that fight over Trevin Giles. Trevin Giles was landing some jabs in that fight. But I honestly thought he didn't have to win that fight. So he probably should be on a 3-5 inch right now. Evan Elder took that fight on short notice, to be fair, and he still out-wrestled Evan Elder for all three rounds. So the guy has a crazy cardio on him. He trains really hard. Obviously got knocked out by Daniel Rodriguez. That was in short notice for um, Preston Parsons. Uh, that was his debut um, on short notice. And we all know Rodriguez got taken pretty solid taken defense. He's got really powerful hands on him. But uh, that was a short, that was like super short notice for Preston Parsons. Give me Preston Parsons to get it done by decision. I think he's. I think Obanelli is pretty tough. I think our Parsons can out, can out wrestle him. I'll strike him on the feet. I think he's a better technical striker. Give me Preston Parsons minus one sixty two. Damn, he opened up at minus one fifteen. I should have probably bet him early. Like I was thinking about it. I was like maybe the line's gonna flip the other way because uh, Obanelli is like five and zero his last couple fights, and people are gonna like the Obanelli side. But yeah, I guess the people are on to it. Um, I like I still like Preston Parsons here. I think I think it goes over one and a half rounds, over two and a half rounds, and it goes a distance. Um, I think I think this fight to go the distance is pretty pretty solid. Uh, Obanelli is pretty tough. I think Preston Parsons is pretty tough. I don't think these guys have crazy knockout power on the feet. And the submissions, I think Obanelli is gonna be able to survive. His grappling is pretty good. I think there's gonna be some takedowns here in this fight, and it's gonna go the distance. I think I like Preston Parsons, but this isn't here. Um. Present Parsons by decision. Next fight on the card is going to be Colin Lafren taking on Ramon Tavares. This is a good matchup, man. This is actually a good matchup. Um, Colin Lafren, I mean, I picked him by decision over Andrew Pacheco because I was like, he's, there's no way he's finishing Andrew Pacheco. He was close to finishing Andrew Pacheco in the second on. He was like grounded and pounding Pacheco in the second on. But um, obviously, Pacheco is as tough as they come and he couldn't finish him out there, which is not, not, not a shock. I mean, like, Angel Pacheco's never been finished for a reason. He's really tough. Yeah, um, this is this is a good fight, man. The Ramon Torres is going to be live in this fight. I'll say that much. He's got really good striking. I mean, really good boxing. He's mostly a boxer. Doesn't throw a lot of kicks out there. But he throws a lot of body shots out there. And his striking is pretty good. He's got some KO power also. I mean, this this fight, I mean, he got that win back right over Serhi Saidi, the Canadian prospect. And then this was early stop is in the contender series. So the so the Dana White's like, let me give you another opportunity to contend this series since that was a really early stop by the referee. So they brought him back, right? They brought him back to fight uh Cortavius or Mibius. And Cortavius was supposed to go out and wrestle this guy, and he was underdog in that fight. I picked Cortavius from Mibius. I was I was like, this guy's gonna wrestle him. Oh, it's gonna be easy. It's gonna take him down and just maul him. 
while Cortavius was just striking with him for some reason. wasn't really taking none at all. And Serhi Saidi, that was the fight of the night. I know people are saying that was a robbery. I don't think it was a robbery. It was a really, really close fight. Uh, those fights are not robberies. I mean, close fights like that are never robberies, I feel like. So this is, this is a good matchup, man. I mean, I, I, I'm i going to lean towards Lafren. I think he's got better wrestling. He's got He can take this to the mat if he needs to. Striking, I think it's, he's got a solid chin on him. He's got really nice knees up the middle. He throws more kicks out there. He's not that high, like doesn't throw a lot of striking, like doesn't throw a lot of volume out there, which I, I hope he throws more volume in this fight because Torres is going to be there. He's going to be in his face. He's going to throw some power shots out there. He's got some power. But yeah, give me Lafren by, um, I'll go by this as not. I think he's going to, I think he's going to go to this. He's shown some power outside the UFC, but hasn't really shown a lot of power um, in the in the UFC. I mean, in the UFC, yeah. he's shown some power in Cage Warriors. He's, he's out there finishing people. I mean, he took that fight on short notice against Tierra Laplace. I think that was short notice for him, right? Was that not short notice for him? If I'm not mistaken, I think that was short notice for um let me see. Let me make sure if that was short notice for um um I think that was short notice for um yeah, that was he was yeah, so Laplace was was, was supposed to fight Moon Gafrov and uh, Colin uh, took that fight on short notice to get uh, get into UFC so and he was taking on uh, Laplace. I mean, Laplace isn't really out there getting taken on by everyone out there. Right? So he still got some takedowns. And was, it's just a, he got outstruck on the feet because Laplace is a high-level kickboxer. And he got outstruck on the feet. But it was a pretty close matchup. I mean, it was 29-28 for Laplace. And the striking was, he was keeping it competitive on the feet. Give me Lafren by the season here. I think he gets it done by the season. Minus 218 for Lafren. I don't know. Do you guys want to pull at him, I guess? Like, t like Torres is pretty tough and durable, man. He's got really good, like, he's he's a, he's got that dog in him. So he's going to fight for your money. If you like underdog on this card, I mean, maybe Torres. I mean, I was thinking about picking him here, but I think Lafren can mix in takedowns if he doesn't like what's happening on the feed in this fight. Give me Lafren by the season. Next fight on the card is going to be Molly Meatball McCann taking on um, Bruno Brazil. Give me Meatball Molly McCann. I think she gets this one done. This is a good matchup for her. I mean, given, the UFC gave her someone that's not going to be out, out there taking her down or, like, submitting her. It's going to be a striking matchup. I think Molly, Molly's got more power on the feet. Bruno Brazil's got some pretty good striking. I mean, she's a pretty good striker on the feet. Throws a lot of kicks out there. Not really a lot of power on the feet. She was able to... Um, I mean, she was able to knock out Martin, Matt, Martin uh, man, who's not really, like, is not that good. Shouldn't be fighting UFC, let's be honest. And is really undersized for the weight class. She's like five feet tall. I mean, shouldn't be fighting uh, at uh, Strawweight. Even should be probably fighting at Adam Wade somewhere in another promotion. And um, I think Molly Meatball gets this one done. She can get a submission here. Um, I think she can get a submission here in this fight. I really do believe that, man. Molly Meatball, like, she's got striking. She can outstrike her also. I feel like she can uh, land the better shots out there. And obviously, she's losing these fights because she can't really, like, grapple when she's facing these girls that have high-level BJJ. She's been subbed three times. I mean, that's not good. But um, these girls are taking her down and um, beating her up, right? Tala Santos is pretty physically strong and can wrestle, can grapple, I mean, and can strike on the feet, has power on the feet. I don't think that's the case here with Boone Brazil. Um, I don't know if you guys want to trust her at this line. I mean, the line's definitely crazy for me. Molly Meatball McCann. Um, she's really she's dropped the ball a couple of times. I mean, she was I think she was like a minus four hundred and that's only Renko fight and she got subbed in the first round. So never really a good sign there. And obviously got out she got dominated by Aaron Blanchfield. I just don't see Bruno Brazil shooting takedowns. And if he doesn't shoot takedowns, I mean it's probably gonna be a striking matchup and I think Molly's gonna be landing the better shots out there. So you can also take Bruno Brazil down. I think Brazil's taking defense is looking better in that Loma Luk Bume fight. But I see still like um getting uh, a grapple and some exchanges out there and Denise Gomes obviously just fucking not just knock her out. I mean it was like a vicious KO there by Denise Gomes. I think I I did pick up uh, Denise Gomes there. I mean Den Denise Gomes is pretty good, to be fair. I, yeah, I did pick uh, Denise Gomes there. Um, I didn't think she was gonna knock her out, but she knocked her out with the straight right hand. Give me Molly Meatball by I'll go by submission from Meatball uh, Molly. The odds for this one, I mean like. Molly Meatball. We should have odd here. I mean, um, minus 290. Damn. Minus 290 for Molly Meatball McCann. 
maybe look at submission. I mean, I could see her like maybe get like I think that submission probably more likely. She she went out there and got a submission over um, Dina Babita, took her down, got that easy armbar. I think she's gonna have a physicality uh, advantage here. I think she's like more physical than Bruno Brazil. Bruno Brazil's got some power, but Molly's like chin is pretty durable. I mean, she's never been KO'd. So I don't really see Bruno Brazil just like knocking out with a head kick or something. Could be probably a close fight. I mean, Molly's not like crazy high high volume striker out there. But I do feel like she's gonna be landing the better shots. She's gonna be taking more chances out there. Give me Molly by submission. I think she gets this one done by submission. Next fight on the card is gonna be Daniel Natalia Wood. <laughs> not Daniel Wood. Natalia Wood taking on uh, Daniel Pineda. Give me Wood. I think Wood gets it done. This is gonna. This is an easy matchup for him, man. And Daniel Pineda has got some grappling, but other than the grappling, he doesn't really have much else, much else out there. And he's not gonna take. I don't think he's taking on Italian Wood. Wood's take the defense has been pretty, pretty solid. He was getting taken on Naima in that fight, but Naima was cheating a lot. I mean, and um, I think he cheated like three or four times. I mean, and Wood was close to knocking him out in the third round there. Obviously, um, and that and the Andre Feely fight was really fucking crazy. I mean, he got dropped early by Feely, which is not a good sign. But Feely's got some power, I guess, some striking. I mean, technical striking. Beat Charles Jordan. I mean, beat Charles Raza. Uh, got outstruck by Casey Kenny. Uh, Casey Kenny hasn't fought in a long time. I don't know where Casey Kenny's been. Uh, hasn't been over John Castaneda, which is pretty solid. I mean, so he's been in DFC for a minute, man. So I mean, damn, he got knocked out by John Dodson. Who's fighting in BKFC now? I think. Um, I think the line's definitely crazy here, but I think the striking is gonna be way better from uh, from Wood here. And if Pinedo doesn't get a submission off, get a takedown or submission, I think he's gonna lose this fight. And also, he's getting up there in age for uh, 145. Yeah, give me give me Natalia Wood to get it done by. Um, I'll go by decision. I mean, like Pinedo's pretty tough and durable, man. And that uh, Caceres fight, I mean, the, he wasn't really getting takedowns in that fight, and the, and the striking was really, like, Caceres was outstriking him easy. Well, Pinedo had some good moments and some exchanges out there, but um, he was close to getting KO'd, but he showed a lot of toughness in that fight. Uh, Caceres landing some nice body kicks, leg kicks, I mean, he was really mixing in the targets there. Give me Wood, I think Wood gets it done by, um, by this is in 30-27 here. Tony Wood, minus 485. I still think it's a good parlor piece, even at minus 40, 485, which is kind of crazy to say, though, but I still think it's a good parlor piece because I just don't see him getting subbed in this fight. And if, if Pinedo doesn't get the submission, I mean, how does he win? He's never been subbed in UFC yet. I mean, he's fought some pretty good guys out there. Jimmy Wood by by this is in 30-27. All right, guys, next fight on the card is going to be Bobby King Green. King Green taking on Patty Pimblade. Damn man, this is this is this is a good matchup. This is actually a good matchup. Uh, this is gonna be Patty Pimbler's toughest fight out there. <laughs> like, I watched some tape and I was like, I'm still having a hard time making a pick here, because King Green. I mean, his striking is world class. I mean, strike. He's been UFC for so long. He's still ranked in the top fifteen. I mean, like his only loss was uh, Jalen Turner, like recently, who should be fighting at one seventy. Let's be let's be honest. He's, he's an absolute weed bully. And uh, he came back and looked pretty good uh, good against Jim Miller, who's definitely out of his prime. I mean, I picked Jim Miller there, which is crazy. I'm pretty dumb for picking Jim Miller there. But um, he looked pretty good on there. He was getting hurt in the first round. Then he found his timing, and he was up to all class. Uh, Jim Miller, easy. And he almost was close to finishing Jim Miller. I think I think the third round was a 10-8 round out there for uh, Bobby Green. So he put a beating on Jim Miller, man. He definitely put a beating on Jim Miller. I used to 300. And uh, he obviously knocked out Grant Dawson with one punch KO power. And obviously submitted Tony, Tony Ferguson. But Tony Ferguson did drop him early. So, But he's he's fought some pretty decent guy. Like, he's fought the way better competition than, uh, like, Paddy Pimblade. I mean, fought um, Jude Dober. I mean, like, he was outclassing Jude Dober before he got KO'd. Stiff. And Islam Magashev, obviously, just, that was short notice for Bobby Green. He took, he took that fight on super short notice. He was trying to save a main event there for uh, Islam Magashev. took that fight. And uh, obviously, like, Magashev the champion for a reason. So no shame there. We, we'll give him a break, break for that one. Rafael Faziv, I mean, that was a pretty close fight. I mean, he was not landing the, like, Rafael Faziv was landing the more powerful shots out there. But it was a pretty close fight, though. And that, I mean, Tiago Moises fight, he should have probably won that fight. I mean, that was, like, a really, another, like, really weird decision. Um, 
So like this is this is gonna be a tough fight for Patty Pimblet, but I am gonna lean towards Patty Pimblet in in his hometown because I feel like it's gonna be striking, it's gonna be competitive. I think Patty Pimblet is gonna keep this competitive, and uh, a, a close fight is gonna go towards Patty Pimblet. I have a sneaky suspicion there, and give me Patty Pimblet by decision. I don't see him submitting Bobby Green unless he gets knocks him down with something. He's definitely showing some power. I mean, he, I think he knocked down Tony Ferguson the first and was close to finishing him. Then he couldn't fin get get the finish for Ferguson, and Ferguson was able to survive. Ferguson is really tough still, even though he's not the same Ferguson anymore. Obviously, he should have lost to Jared Gordon, I mean, but um, it was a pretty close fight, though, looking back on it. And Bobby Green, I mean, that Jared Gordon was outclassing Bobby Green in that fight. He was like, so like, they both should be coming off losses to Jared Gordon right the, right now. And the only reason that was a no contest was because uh, they had an accidental uh, head clash. And um, obviously, Bobby Green took, uh, I think, no, Jared Gordon was the one that got fucking slept with the head clash headbutt. I mean, give me Patty Pimblay by, by the season in his hometown. It probably is gonna, it's probably going to be a close fight. People are probably going to be mad to give it to uh, um, um, Patty Pimblay. But I have a f suspicion they're going to give it a close fight. It's going to go towards Pat Patty Pimblay on the score of hers out there. Patty Pimblet is plus 110 right now, underdog. Give me Patty Pimblet as an underdog, plus 110. The line was actually a lot higher early. I think Patty Pimblet gets it done by um, by the season. All right, guys, next fight on the card is going to be Mohamed Makayev taking on Manol Cap. Another, this is a good matchup, man. I'm actually excited for this matchup now. Like, I was like, oh, man, it's going to be really boring. Mohamed Makayev's fight, last fight was really, really boring. Um, he fought um, um, Alex Perez, and he was like, it was really, I guess he has satisfaction, right, going into that one. So we can, we could probably cut him a break for that one. Still won the fight, but it was like, striking looked a lot better in that fight, in that Alex Perez fight. So now he's going to be, hopefully he's not, uh, doesn't have any um, injuries or like he doesn't have any satisfaction this time. Manuel Cap is a high-level striker, man. He's definitely got some of the best striking at 125. He's he's got some power. Obviously, he hasn't shown a lot of power recently. Like, uh, and he took that out. Uh, funny, Felipe dos Santos took that fight on short notice, and he looked really good out there. So I think Manuel Cap is kind of overrated. I feel like his striking is just overrated because he's he got he's gotten some KOs over these guys. I mean, knocked out Ori Osborne, who's like pretty mid, and Jelga Jumagulab is not with the UFC anymore. The king of simple split decisions. I mean, Jelga Jumagulab. And I mean, he's he's got some decent wins in Ryzen. I mean, as Kaya Sakura win, knocked out Kaya Sakura back in 2019. Um, he fought Kaya Sakura two times. I mean, so he's got some high level wins. I mean, that that win over Kaya Sakura is aging really well now that Kaya Sakura is fighting UFC now. Give me Muhammad Makayev though. I think Muhammad Makayev can time some takedowns here and um, mix in takedowns. I mean, just hold him against the cage. Well, it's Manel Cap is a live underdog here for sure. He's definitely a live underdog, but I think Makayev is going to be able to time some takedowns. We have seen um, Manel Cap getting taken down in that Mateus Nikolaou fight. That was three and a half years ago, though. That was, it's been some time, so maybe he's fixed some holes in his game. But um, he's striking defense. Taking defense has definitely improved a lot recently, but I, I'm going to go with Mohamed Makayev here. I think striking is improving right now. He's only 23 years old, so he's only going to get better. Whereas Manel Cap and it is in his prime right now, so maybe he can go out there and like uh, hurt Makayev with something crazy, some power shot to knock him out, which could happen. I mean, Muhammad Makayev is lost his last fight. Obviously, came in with the staff traction, but the body language was not looking that good out there against uh, Perez, who's got some power, but nowhere near the striking uh, at um, that Manel Cap has. Yeah, give me give me Makayev to win by decision. I think he gets it done by on the scorecards here. Um, Muhammad Makayev is a minus 122, slightly favored here. Yeah, give me Makayev to get it done by decision. He does have a lot of experience in the in the amateurs. I mean, he's got some pretty a lot of experience in the amateurs before he made his pro debut um, in in MMA. I mean, this is if he goes out there and beats um, 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 Manel Cap, it's going to be the best win on his record, other than Alex Perez, which was a really close fight. And the only reason he won that fight because he was mixing in takedowns and he was landing the more volume. If Perez was being more busy out there, he probably could have won that fight. Obviously, that win over Charles Johnson, he's aging really well. He wasn't getting takedowns. It was just, just mostly just him cage pushing Charles Johnson, attempting takedowns. I could see him doing something similar here. I think the overs are pretty safe. I mean, like, um, I think it goes over two and a half rounds. It goes a distance. 
Give me Minot Mukhaya by by this season. Cop has only been like sub one time, I think. Um, yeah, he's only been sub one time in the third round. I don't see Mukhaya just getting a submission. If he gets a submission, of Minot Cap, I mean, his hype's gonna take off. He's gonna get a title shot. He probably should be next for the title shot right now for getting this win if he gets this one done, which I think he's gonna do uh, in his hometown in out of England. Give me Mukhaya on the scorecards. All right, guys. Next fight on the card is gonna be. Uh, Arnold Allen taking on Giga Chikadze. Good fight, man. It's actually a good fight. I mean, Giga Chikadze came back after a layoff and um, looked pretty mid against Al Caceres. I mean, Caceres is ultimate gatekeeper. Like, a lot of people don't really look that good over Caceres, to be fair. But that was a really close fight, man. It was striking was really, like, really close. The striking numbers were really close. Uh, let me see how many, like, the striking numbers were really close, I remember. Let me see if I can, like, pull it up right now and just, like, Take a look at it. So the striking numbers were like Giga Chikate outstruck Al Caceres by three significant strikes. I mean, so that's not a good sign. I mean, like Caceres obviously was throwing a lot of volume out there, also landing some good shots on uh, Giga Chikate. And uh, I think I think I don't know if Giga Chikate is in his prime anymore. I feel like he's lost a step because uh, if he was in his prime, I think he would have probably like hurt Caceres a couple of times with some body shots. Even though Caceres is really tough. Obviously gotten dominated by Kelvin Cater. I mean, Kelvin Cater, like, hurt him bad on the feet. Got dropped him also, like, uh, wrestled him. I mean, that was... And also had the submission attempt. But Giga Chikate showed how tough he is in that fight. So the guy is definitely tough. He's durable. That was his first main win. I mean, in DC ever took some time off and came back. And I don't think he looked that good out there. He was supposed to fight uh, Josh Emmett recently. Like, um, unfortunately, Bryce Mucho took that fight and got absolutely um, sent to Shadow Rum City. Um, yeah, he was supposed to fight Josh Emmett, um, back in, um, was that UFC 300? No, that was, that was UFC 296. I mean, damn, that was, that was a while ago. And that was like over six months ago now, almost eight months now. So he was supposed to fight Josh Emmett there. And, um, yeah, um, and obviously Bryce Mitchell got sacrificed to Josh Emmett there. Um, but he got probably dodged the bullet there. Um, so, I mean, other than that, before, I mean, he was on a roll before. He was out there knocking out outs in Barboza. I mean, uh, knocking a Giga, Cup Swanson with a Giga kick. Um, so he was like, he was on a roll. I mean, he was out there finishing these guys. And I think that Kevin Cater fight might have changed something. Um, might have changed his, changed his career for not, not, not for the better. Um, so... I don't know, Allen, I mean, he's losing to, like, Moser, which is a really close fight. That fight, like, was really, really close. Moser striking was actually looking better in that fight. It was, like, maybe mixing... I think it was, like, taking him down, chain wrestling, um, like, he got Aaron Allen, I mean. And then Max Holloway, obviously, I, I had... That was my first lock on this channel. I picked Max Holloway as a lock of the week on that channel. On my channel, I mean, that was my first ever lock of the week. I pick lock of the weeks every week. And then we're coming up to back-to-back lock of the week, John Silva, so... I remember that was my first lock of the week uh, ever on the channel. I had Max Holloway by the season, and he was actually looking better in the, in the later rounds in the Max, against Max Holloway, which a lot of people don't really look that good against Max Holloway. Unless you're Wokanowski. I mean, so Wokanowski's the only guy that looks really good against Max Holloway. And I think he was he was winning that fifth round and up until he got dropped. I mean, he was trying to go for the KO or Max Holloway. But he was landing some nice elbows in the, in, in, in the pocket. I mean, he was, like, landing some nice knees and stuff, timing some nice leg kicks. So... I'm going to go with Allen here. I think Allen gets it done. Um, does he get the finish? I mean, Giga's pretty tough, though. Uh, Giga's pretty tough, man. He's 8-1 in one UFC. Like, he's pretty tough. He took an ass whooping in that Kevin Cater fight. The guys can definitely take a beating, though. He's 35 years old. Give me Arnold Allen by KO. I think he can get the KO here. Um, it's probably not that likely, but I have a feeling he's going to get the KO here. Allen by KO. Um, I like the money line. I think the money line is not bad uh, here for uh, Allen. Allen is a minus uh, 265 right now. The line is definitely kind of chalky, but I feel like he's going to be quicker. He's going to have the more speed on his side. Also, the activity. I like the activity from Allen here. He's been fighting, like, um, in the last five years. I mean, last three, enough, three years, I mean, he's fought five times. I mean, and, um, I mean, Giga's also fought five times the last three years. So, I mean, but Giga's only fought once in the last, like, two and a half years, which is um, maybe can cost him. He hasn't fought in nine months, almost a year. Give me Allen. To get it done by KO TKO, uh, I think he can land some nice punches on uh, Giga Chikate and maybe hurt him, maybe maybe get get a finish. But uh, Giga's pretty tough though. Like he's never, I don't think he's been finished yet. Right? He's only been sub one time, and that was not in the UFC. So the guy is clearly pretty durable. But yeah, um, I'm gonna go with Allen here by um, 
by maybe decision or maybe with TKO. Um, I don't know. If, I don't see him getting submission. He's got some submission wins, I mean, in DFC, but he's got two submission wins in DFC. But I don't know if he's going to lock in a submission over um, over Giga. Giga's, Giga's knows how to defend submissions. Yeah, give me Allen to get it done here. Um, probably a good parlor piece, I feel like. All right, guys. Cold main event time. Make sure you guys smash the like button on the on this video if you guys if you guys are enjoying the breakdown. Also, subscribe to the channel, guys. We're trying to work away to 2,500 subscribers now. We're getting close. We're only we're like 400 subscribers away now. Also, if you guys want to support the channel, if you guys want to support what I do on this channel, you're gonna support the live streams. Uh, you can become a member. It's only like 4.99 a month, and you get you get some bets that I'm placing on this card. You get to see everything in the community post. Now let's get back to this breakdown, guys. We got Tom Aspinall take Tom Aspinall taking a Curtis Blades a rematch. Obviously, that first fight, um, uh, you guys remember, um, uh, Aspinall's knee got injured. He had a knee injury there, so um, that was like that only lasted like a minute. I mean, that was not even like it was only like fifteen seconds. Damn, it was only fifteen seconds. That's crazy. That was like a minute. Yeah, that was only fifteen seconds. I mean, his freak injury. So they're running it back here. Aspinall probably should be fighting for the title right now. He should be fighting John Jones, but John Jones doesn't want to smoke, I guess. I'm a pretty big John Jones fan. I mean, I, I, I respect what he's done over the years. I mean, in DFC, um, he, like, John Jones is pretty good, man, but he should be fighting. Uh, you should be fighting the next up-and-comers. Um, even though he's, I mean, I, I'm okay if he just wants to retire. I mean, just retire already, but... um. It is what it is, right? With that, I mean, whatever. So he's he's, he's trying. They're they're giving him uh, Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis Blades here is coming off a win over um, Almeida, where he was getting taken on nine times. He got taken on nine times by um, Jailton Almeida. He was getting steamrolled in that fight by Jailton Almeida, who's a pretty good wrestler. I mean, Almeida wasn't really doing any damage. It was just mostly just control of wrestling him. And uh, nine times, I mean, that's pretty bad. I mean, when you're when you're like a, when you're known for wrestling and you're getting taken on nine times, I mean, that's not good. That's not good. Curtis Blades, come on, brother. Obviously, he got steamrolled by Sergey Pavlovich, which that that loss is not aging well for him now. <laughs> has wins over um, Trish Dacus, I mean, who's not with the UFC anymore. Has wins over Rosen Strike. That's that's aging pretty well. I mean, Rosen Strike's a good keeper. I want wants two sixty five. I mean, heavyweight has a win over Alexander Volkov. I mean, so. He's got some high-level wins. He's, in, he's been UFC for a, for a long time. But I am going to go with Aspinall here. Like, I think he's going to be the better better uh, striker here. He's going to be quicker. He's going to have the better BJJ game if they do go to the ground. I think Aspinall is going to have the better BJJ, better Jiu-Jitsu, more life for submission. I feel like he's going to be striking they're going to be striking on the feet, and I think Aspinall is going to knock him out, I mean, which is pretty obvious, I'm sure. He has a lot of people, 92% picking Aspinall by KO. Um, I think if if he's hundred percent, if he's healthy, I think Aspinall's team rolls here. Um, Aspinall by KO first round. I think he gets Curtis Blades out of there by first round KO. Um, Curtis Blades been KO'd a couple of times now. I mean, so Blades. I mean, Lewis was able to time that uppercut right, like because in the second round, then kind of knocked him out in the first round. So give me, give me Aspinall. I think the speed's gonna give him uh, give Blades a lot of issues here. I I, I also like um. Aspinall, I think, is good to go here. He should be fighting for the title right now. Knocking out Sergei Pavlovich for the way he did was crazy. I mean, that was vicious KO from uh, Aspinall there. Um, yeah, give me Aspinall by KO. I think he gets it done by KO here. Aspinall minus the 80 right now. I think that's not a, still not a bad part of the piece of thing. I'm pretty confident he gets this one back. Next fight on the card. I think the under one and a half rounds, under two and a half rounds. I mean, I think it goes under one and a half rounds. Aspinall's gone under one and a half rounds so many times. I don't think he's gone past the first round in the UFC. Even if he, I think he had, the only time he's gone past the first round, I think was that, was it the Arlovsky fight? Okay, the, yeah, it was the Arlovsky fight. The only time he's gone over one and a half rounds, over uh, over the first round, I mean. And he was able to get the submission of Arlovsky there. And that was his first couple fights in the UFC. Yeah, give me, give me Aspinall here to get it done. By KO or submission. I mean, I think KO is probably more likely on the feed. Because Blades is kind of chinny. He's uh, he's like, those jabs really, like, if Asmo pops a jab out there, he pumps, keeps pumping a jab out there, he can, he can, I think he can land some shots over the top. So Asmo by KO is my pick. Next fight on the card, guys, we, got the, we have the main win now. Main win of the evening, we got a rematch. Another rematch between Bilal, Muhammad, taking on Lee and Edwards. First fight, I mean, if you go back, if you remember the first fight, you go back and watch the first fight, Lee and Edwards, Edwards was dominating that fight it was not even close 
Bilal was just stuck in the mud. He was just like defending strikes. I mean, the whole time wasn't really land. Was couldn't really get his game going out there because Edwards was too slick for him. Obviously, Bilal's made a ton of improvements since then. He's got like I think he's got the most um, ranked wins in the UFC right now at one seventy, other than maybe uh, Edwards. Um, wins over uh, Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns did break his hand in that fight, and that was short notice for both Bilal Muhammad and uh, and uh, Gilbert Burns. I mean. So uh, credit to Bilal Muhammad for going out there and uh, taking that fight on short notice, saving that, saving that fight, and knocked uh, Sean Brady by standing TKO. That was his first ever KO in the UFC. Um, I wrestled Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. That was mostly just controlling Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, and um, he's only been KO'd once. It was by Luke. Like I think that was his first fight in the in first couple of fights in the UFC. So he's been in the UFC since 2016. Man, he's been in the UFC for so long, like over 10 years at this point. Uh, I mean, like nine, eight years at this point. Bala Muhammad is gonna get this one done. I'm not picking Bala Muhammad here. As much as I was close to picking him here, um, I think uh, if he doesn't get takedowns here, which I think is gonna be not that easy. I mean, I think Edwards' the strike takedown defense improved a ton. I, the way he got taken on by Kobe Covington was because Kobe he was making a mistake, looking for submissions over Kobe Covington, trying to get his own takedowns. He was trying to offensively wrestle there. I don't think he's gonna be doing 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 the same thing in this fight. I think he's gonna just keep his standing like he was doing in that Kamar Usman rematch third fight trilogy, and he's able to go out there and outclass Kamar Usman. Obviously, not the same Kamar Usman. I mean, Blau is probably more in his prime right now than Kamar Usman is right now. So, obviously, he got the crazy comeback from behind. I had kick KO over Usman. He was like getting dominated in that fight. Uh, had had a first good good first round. He was like taking Usman in the first round, um, taking his back, trying to find submission over him. And obviously Nate Diaz rocked him in the fifth round. But other than that, I mean Edwards is dominating that fight. So both these guys are pretty high level, man. I'm actually excited for this fight. I think this could be a good fight now. Now that I now that we have two back to back women's main events, this is good. This card is gonna be a like uh, uh breath of fresh air. I mean, so it's gonna be a lot better. I got high hopes for this card now. I am gonna go with Edwards here. I think he's gonna just outclass him on the feet. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna just gonna be just quicker to the punches, quicker to the counters. I think Edwards is gonna, if he can, just uh, control him for five rounds. I think it's gonna be really tough for Bilal Muhammad to win a decision in England. I mean, uh, so it's not gonna be tough. It's not gonna be easy, and he's not out there finishing these guys like everyone. I mean, he finished Sean Brady, and wasn't even like couldn't even get a knockdown in that fight. I think Edwards is gonna be, he's gonna be, he's gonna get this one done. I'm going Edwards here. Lee and Edwards by this decision. I mean, Blah Muhammad's pretty tough, so I'm gonna go. I think a KO is probably likely. I mean, he was landing some nice head kicks on Blah Muhammad there in that fight, in that first fight. I mean, their their first fight that was like three three and a half years ago. I mean, Blah's made a ton of improvements since then. Striking has come a long way. He's been striking more out there, not really trying to hold guys down anymore. But I think he's gonna be pressuring forward, and he's probably gonna get countered with by Edwards here, and he's probably gonna get dropped with something. Maybe you can recover, but uh, I'm going Edwards here. I think he's going to be live for a KO. It's a five-round fight. Um, Bilal is pretty durable. Um, I'm going to go Edwards here. I think Edwards gets it done. Um, Bilal, uh, Bilal Muhammad plus 170 right now. And Leon minus 2 of 5. I'm going Leon. I think Leon gets it done in his, uh, in his home. He gets another title defense out there. And um, he hasn't fought in six months, so, so I think he gets it done. I'm going Edwards here. I think Edwards gets it done by uh, by this season. Uh, I have alerts on for my channel right now. Someone just subscribe. Please choose subscribing, brother. Whoever that is. Um, so I'll, I'll see you guys later, man. Uh, that's my full card breakdown for uh, UFC 3 4. Hope you guys enjoy the full card breakdown there. And um, there you go, guys. I'll, um, we'll do a live preview next week for this card. I'm excited for this card now. I think, I think this could be a decent pay-per-view. Um, it's not going to be crazy, but I mean, there's some fun fights on this card. Now that I did my research, watched some tape on these fighters, I'm, I'm getting excited for this card now. There you go, guys. I'll see you guys later, man. Hope you guys enjoy the full card breakdown. And please drop a like, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment down below with your locks on this card. Who you guys are most confident on this card? Drop your parlays, plus money parlays on this card. And um, I'll see you guys later, man. Take it easy, guys. Stay healthy out there. Stay safe out there. And um, hope you guys enjoy this full card um, pay-per-view next week. Later, guys.